introduce to you His Excellency Dr. Manusher Motaki, who is Foreign Minister of the Islamic Republic of Iran, who is going to talk to us on Iranian foreign policy, uh, a subject which is intrinsically of great interest, of course. Down be dictator! This man is dictator! This man is dictator! This is terrorist! This is the Iranian! I'm Iranian, but you are a dictator! You are mad girl, you are loaded! You're killing people in election! Guys, you will not should do that! This dictator! This man is dictator! This man is dictator! What is as I was going to say, uh, the Middle East is always in the news, and unfortunately, um, what is always in the news is not because it's good news. Uh, we have reason to uh, be intimately aware of that here this week. Um, and Iran, of course, uh, is a very important actor in the Middle East. Uh, many of you will have heard that uh, only today uh, in the Security Council uh, a fourth round of sanctions uh, against Iran uh, was decided um, in the Security Council. Uh, so uh, it's to say that the subject on which uh, His Excellency uh, Dr. Mataki will speak is of great interest uh, at any time, but particularly just now. So uh, may I ask you uh, to speak on the subject, uh, Your Excellency. <clears throat> Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. In the name of God, the compassionate, the merciful, first of all, I'm very glad to present here and uh, to talk with you about the topic which uh, you have mentioned. And uh, I express my gratitude to IIEA, the valuable uh, institution for this invitation. It's a good opportunity to sit together, to talk to each other, to hear from each other, and, and uh, even criticize each other's policies. Iranian nation is the nation of dialogue with 7,000 years of history. You know, the Iranian nations, different ethnic group. We have Kurdish, we have Arabs, we have Baluch, we have Baluch. I be, oh, all right, you can raise the question and I will answer. Then you should not Shame violate. You. Shame you, you should. You are the murderer. Why did you execute five Kurdish political prisoners? Yeah? Don't stand here and say you represent Iranian people. You do not represent. Excuse me. No. no. Where is the guard? I don't want to be touched by these murderers. Yeah. Excuse me. I want the guard here. Excuse me, where is the guard? This is where is the guard? Who the f are you? Yeah? This is a private. You meeting. can't allow the Iranian terrorists to come here. Excuse me. This is a Why did you kill four political time. prisoners? Do not touch me. Do not touch me. You can't touch me. Can I have the guard here, please? Do we live in the markets? Don't, don't touch me. Can I have the guard here, please? Can I have the guard, please? What the f is going on here? Are you for real? Can I have to go? Let, let, I can't shut them. No, 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 We have different ethnic group in Iran. We have Arabs, we have Baluch, we have Turkmen. 
and uh, who were in living, living together based on coexistence for last several thousand years. Iran was sharing actively in the human being civilizations. And uh, you have heard a lot about Iranian nations. Iran is the nation of dialogue. Iran believes the main reason for existence of this country and this great nation is because of its peaceful approach to different attack and aggression on this country. Iran is located in the geopolitical areas, which we have 15 neighboring countries. And Iran is the only country in that region which was not as a colony, and also it was not a colonialist country. Iran always was a part of solution in a, in a, in a, among the, or in the center of different crises in that region. If you look to the region, you will see a, about 80% of the energy which is needed for the world coming from the Middle East. And after collapse of the Soviet Union, you have Central Asia and other resources for energy, particularly the gas in Turkmenistan and the oil and gas in Kazakhstan. In a very long history of my country, you have not seen in the history that Iran attacked any neighboring countries. It shows that Iranians are a peace-loved nation. But whenever we were attacked by the others, in the history, we have defend ourselves. We had different views among our nations, but in a democratic way, always we tried to, to solve anything which we have. After revolution in Iran, we have established a democratic system which the people tried to decide for themselves. In the past, there was no such a situation, particularly during the Shah's regime. The ladies who were in the jail during the Shah's regime now are in the parliament, are minister, are official in the countries. The women play a very important role in my country. More than 60% of the Iranian students in universities are the girls. About 40% of the scholars in universities are women. 33% of the doctors and the specialist doctors are women in my country, they are in the parliament, in the cabinet, in the councils of the cities and provinces. And it shows that in Iran, everything stands in its own position. If you look to the history, the most ancient documents on human rights belong to Iran those who know Kurosh in the history of Iran. And 2,000 years ago, a woman was minister or secretary of treasury in the government of Iran. And nowadays, why sometimes we are under pressure or some propaganda? We should look to the policies which our country following in our region. We have an old crisis in the Middle East 
the crisis of Palestine. We, for, for more than six decades, we have the crisis of Afghanistan for about 31 years. We have been witness with the crisis of Iraq. And both Afghanistan and Iraq are eastern and the western neighbors of Iran. We had the crisis of Tajikistan some years ago. Unfortunately, through some good mediation, including the former foreign minister of Eslovak and the Iran's initiative, we could make a stable situation for Tajikistan. And now we have the crisis of Karabakh between Azerbaijan and Armenia. We, have, we had the crisis in, within the last two years in Georgia, between Georgia and Russia. We had internal problems in Lebanon for three years after the war, three years, uh, two, 2006, aggression of the Israelis against Lebanon. After that, after that war, Lebanon entered to an internal crisis. When you look to all those crises, we have to consider the different position, different policies toward this region in general and toward any of these crises in particular. For example, when we look to the, the American approach to, to the crisis in Afghanistan. What's going on in Afghanistan? Eight years ago, <clears throat> after the terrorist activities 11 September, September 11, Mr. Bush came to Afghanistan with the foreign forces. He said, we are looking and trying to realize three targets in Afghanistan. The first one is returning stability, and the second one is stopping terrorism and extremism, and the third one is, third one is combating with the uh, narcotic and drug trafficking. I start from the last. When the foreign forces came to Afghanistan, there was the, the production of opium in Afghanistan was 300 tons. After eight years, now I would like to report to you the production of opium in Afghanistan is 9,000 tons. United Kingdom was responsible in all these years for combating with the terrorism aside with the other allies in Afghanistan. And they should respond. What happened in Afghanistan? And the second target which they were looking for was stability. And stability was in some part of Afghanistan. And today, after eight years, no place in Afghanistan is secure and stable. Even the capital is not stable and secure. Extremism and terrorism. Eight years ago, when you were talking about Taliban, Everybody could remind Afghanistan. But today, in our region, everybody is talking about Pakistani Taliban. How many terrorists were in Afghanistan? One, ten, hundred, thousand, ten thousand terrorists? The question is, more than 100,000 people are killed in Afghanistan. 
But still you can hear that terrorists are there. What was the result of this combating against terrorism? We see some kind of expansion of extremism in that region. Maybe some specific countries in Europe, their analysis is as follow. That is, good, is, not, is uh, not bad if it goes for the others. This is the Persian phrase which we usually use. May some specific European countries consider extremism is not bad if it is in some other region, if it is not in our subway, if it is not in our capital. But what they forget is there is no geographical border for terrorism, for extremism. And that's why in our region, none of the significance which they have announced has progress, that had progress. And we have to say our region maybe eight years ago was more safe than nowadays. Why it is like that? We should have only two judgments. The first is they didn't want to solve the problem. I don't say it is like that. But this is one option that they said something, but they were not committed to what they say. This is one judgment, and the other judgment is they wanted to do something, but they could not. They could not realize what they were looking for in our region. We are living in that region. We have hosted for the last 30 years 3 million Afghan people and refugees in our country. It means 90 million Afghanis were hosted in Iran. And we have served for them. We have given our bread, our income. We have given the opportunity of job in our country to them for 90 million people, which is three times more of the population of Afghanistan at all, in, in general. And more than Iranian population, which is 70 million. This is what we have done. It is our right to have our analysis about what is going on in our region. This is Afghanistan. For Iraq, what they have done? Since last eight years, Iran's policy was to support political trend in Afghanistan. With Turkey, with the neighboring countries, we have established a framework to help Iraq for its, own, its stability. But always allegation was Iran is trying to instable Iraq. It is the first alphabet of diplomacy that a country will try for a stabilization in the region which is in, in its own favor. An stable Iraq is more in favor of Iran or unstable or disstable Iraq. Definitely unstable Iraq is in our favor as well as Afghanistan. What we are receiving from Afghanistan? 9,000 tons of opium, and they produce uh, heroin, and the main destination is Europe. We are criticized that the number of ex execution in Iran is high. When we look to this problem in our region, since last several years, 4,000 Iranian soldiers and the officers 
and the people who are responsible for combating with drug trafficking have been killed in Iran, have been killed in Iran. And in such circumstances, it must be very interesting for you. We have been told by this mafias of narcotic that please let us to transfer the uh, drug to, to, to Europe, and we will not affect Iran at all. But we consider the European youth as Iranian, and we did not allow them to go. Every week, our people are killing by their terrorist activities because it is a, 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 a huge money, black money, in coming from drug trafficking. Do you know what is the value of the quantity of opium in, in Afghanistan? Only if they use the opium is $80 billion. But when they produce heroin and the other uh, uh, narcotics, it moves to hundreds of billions of dollars. It's huge money. For this money, they are ready to kill anybody. And every day, our people are killed by themselves, by, by this, this group. And according to the law, we should have tough reaction to them. And the person which raised the, 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 the five Kurdish people. You have heard the, the PKK in Turkey. That is a terrorist group which within the last 40 years was combating against the government of Turkey. We have, that, that is a Kurdish group, but terrorist one. The Kurdish nation is a peace love nation in our region. They are in, many of them are living in Iraq, the second large community in Iran, and then in Iraq, and the fourth one in Syria, in Syria. All Kurdish people in Iran enjoying their life, but we have a terrorist group which is called Pejak. I think none of the distinguished guests of this meeting could accept armed struggle against the system in any country. And this Pejak group are a terrorist group, and he was supporting, I don't, I don't know, member of that group or supporting that group. It's very clear. If he was sitting here, raising the question in a civilized way, we, we could discuss together, or with the other group. All the Iranians, definitely we have a big number of Iranians, 20 of them, are against the government. And we do hope the police and the officials here do not disturb these people who have some slogan against this delegation or against this meeting. But when they accept to come and sit here in a democratic way, they should raise the question. They can criticize, no problem. This is what we have in Iran. In the TV, in the universities, you know, hundreds of papers we have in Iran with different opinion. We had an election, presidential election, which you have heard a lot about that election and outcome of the election. In that election, which simultaneously the European countries also had the European Parliament's election, do you know what was the participation of Iranian in that election? 85%. It was unique of the revolution. The, the most a stronger uh, participation of Iranian after the revolution was for the first referendum of uh, uh, the, the Islamic Republic of Iran. 
very soon after victory of the revolution. And this election, presidential election, we had nine presidential election in the past, and this was the 10th one. 85% participated in the election. And that must be very interesting. That must be very interesting. All the candidates were happy because of their campaign in the election. Another interesting point for you in this election. Presi one of the president in the past, 12 years ago, in his second term, won the election with 11 million votes. But this time, the winner of the elections vote with the number two of the candidates was the difference, was 11 million. <coughs> At the same time, opposition candidate could receive 13 million votes in Iran, which was, was very, very uh, good participation of the opposition. How this 13 million voted for opposition leader and the candidate of the opposition? If there was no freedom, if, if there was no free campaign for presidential election. Friday, at 8 o'clock, election, voting for ele presidential election started, and 11 p.m. was over. During whole voting time and before that campaigning period, everybody was happy. Opposition assessment was they will win the election, not only opposition. The, all the four candidates' assessment was they will be the winner of the election. Up to 11 p.m., everybody was satisfied. You know, in presidential election, the result will be announced in general in Iran. It is not city by city. It will be announced in general. For example, 5 million votes is counted, and this is the result. 10 million, 15 million, 40 million. Those who had the assessment of their victory in the election, they came in the street. They came to the street, and their slogan was, where are our votes? This was a serious question, and should be answered by the relevant people. Where are their votes? For the first time after the revolution, the relevant officials decided to announce the results city by city, not only city by city, box by box of voting, what is the number of the votes for each candidate. And they have done this. 100,000 people came to the street, and their question was, where is our vote? And the official answered, in Tehran, which is the capital of Iran, we had 4 million votes. From these 4 million votes, 2.2 belonged to the opposition, and 1.8 about to the winner of the election. It means their assessment that they will win the election for Tehran was correct. But Tehran is not whole Iran. Tehran had 4 million votes, and Iran had about 40 million votes. In whole Iran, the rest of Iran, the rest of the country, they could not win the, the election. They had the right of claiming. They had the right of opposing. 
they had the right to take the, the, the case to the relevant body of the country, and they have done, I mean the opposition, and they criticize, they ask the leader, which they have done, and the leader instructed, instructed that it should be considered again, and a committee should be established through the relevant, by, by the relevant officials from different group, and if it is necessary, they should recount the votes, hold the votes, and they consider, they decided randomly to recount 10% of the votes, and the result was the same. Result was the same. Because our election system is very a strong one. No one can interfere in the election system. Why? Because around any box of voting, there are the representatives of different candidates. They can be there from the beginning till end. And they have to sign. With the same system of election, the supreme leader during his presidential election was elected as president. President Rafsanjani, President Khatami, in the first round of President Ahmadinejad. And this was the second term of Ahmadinejad. Then the people started their uh, you know, reaction. The reaction in this trend is up to violation. It is an acceptable principle for all civilized countries and civilized nations. Ruling of law should show itself. When they came to violate everything, even killing the people, burning the bosses, houses, mosques, violating everything in the city, and damaging everything in their uh, action, reaction, and some of them who were armed in their uh, you know, uh, move against the country, definitely no, none of the countries in the world are tolerant to accept violation. This was the only border between, you know, uh, de their position and their action. Last week, 81 of them who were in, in the jail and prison uh, have been forgiven and have been released, and situation is normal. I'm at your disposal for raising any questions, any comments, and uh, I think we are enough patient to sit together, to hear from each other, and dialogue doesn't mean that we do accept all each other's positions. And today's democratic world is enough patient to sit together, to talk each to other, and stand on the commonalities, and discuss about the differences. That is the, the nature of such opportunity. And uh, I thank you once again for this opportunity uh, by this uh, esteemed institution today. Thank you very thank much. You very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Foreign Minister, and uh, thank you for your talk, which, of course, ranged much wider than foreign policy, but touched on questions that I think uh, we are also uh, all interested in. Um, the uh, minister, I, I as to make balance, uh, to make a balance. The minister, as you have heard, uh, is willing to answer questions. So, could I please ask, uh, when you are uh, posing a question? to state your name and your affiliation um, before you ask a question. Yes, I'm the ambassador of Turkey. 
Yes. May I have, uh, may we have your uh, reaction to the very recent decision uh, to your uh, Security Council, please? That's very Thank interesting you. question because it is just cooked a few hours ago <laughs> in the Security Council. Uh, Thank you, Ambassador. Uh, uh, I, I, I think Iran's nuclear issue, I have to talk a little bit yes. with your permission. Okay. And our principles in this regard is very clear. We are against nuclear weapons. And uh, we, we support strongly uh, non-proliferation treaty, which Ireland is one of the uh, for the founder, as Iran was and is. Uh, we do not believe on nuclear weapons. We do not think nuclear weapons will solve any problems. At the same time, we should give this opportunity for the member states of the NPT who are committed to enjoy their right Membership to the international convention or treaties is based on two important elements, obligations and the rights. There must be a balance between obligations and the rights to encourage the country to join the international or regional uh, convention or treaties. According to the nuclear issue, we can categorize the countries in four levels. In the first level, we have the countries who are member of the NPT. At the same time, they have nuclear technology and nuclear bomb. In this category, we have five permanent member of the Security Council. They have nuclear technology. They have nuclear bombs. At the same time, they are member of the NPT. In the second category, we have the countries who have nuclear technology, and also they have nuclear bomb, but they are not member of the NPT. Like whom? Like two countries in the subcontinent, in our region, and the regime of Israel. India, Pakistan, and Israel. The third category is, are the countries who have nuclear technology, they are member of the NPT, and they do not have nuclear bomb, like Brazil, Argentina, South Africa, South Korea, Japan, and Iran would like to be considered in this category. I think if we create the opportunity and facilities for the countries who would like to have nuclear technology for peaceful purposes, Definitely, we will close the way for nuclear bomb. Unfortunately, within the last 40 years, some countries or regime have been armed by nuclear weapons. How? This is very important question. By the permanent member of the Security Council. By them, by them. And that's why we do believe the Article 6 of the NPT should be strengthened. What's Article 6? Disarmament. Two months ago, Iran had disarmament conference in Tehran. From 60 countries, we had participants, officially or institutions and the scholars, researchers. The supreme leader, has released a message to this conference. And he said in his message that nuclear weapons is strongly prohibited. For the Muslim, 
the term of haram in Islamic terminology is very well known. That is the most strong prohibition prohibited is haram. And he used the word of haram for nuclear weapons. It shows our very transparent position in this regard. But we insist on our nuclear energy. The Americans said, why you want to have nuclear energy? You have oil and gas. Four years ago, we said, if it is enough reason not to have nuclear energy, why you have? Because you have oil and gas. And 25% of your electricity is coming from the, from the nuclear power plants. They said, OK, nuclear energy for Iran is OK. We support. But you should not have nuclear fuel. We said then, how we should uh, bring our fuel for the, the nuclear power plant? They said, we will give you. We said, 55, 57 years ago, there was a contract between Iran and the United States. You have established Tehran reactor, which is used for medical isotope. We have spent a lot for that reactor in Tehran. Before revolution, the fuel was coming from the United States, but after revolution, you have stopped. And you made sanction against us. And we tried to bring from the other resources. And the last one, last time, was from Argentina, 1994. We could buy from Argentina that time. This time, a year ago, we announced the IAEA that this reactor, which 850,000 people are involved to the center for humanitarian, for, for the, the medical services, needs fuel, 20% fuel. And uh, you know what is the rule and law and uh, regulations in this regard. Without any condition, the countries who have the fuel, they should give the countries who ask for the fuel. Mr. al Baradei distributed our request to US and Russia. Both respond, we will give the fuel to Iran. When we prepared ourselves to receive the fuel, they said, uh, we, we uh, will give you 20% enriched uranium, while you give 3.5% of your enriched uranium. It is not according to the law, rules and regulation. But we have accepted. Why? Because we wanted to create confidence building. We accepted. For several months, nothing was done from their side. And finally, we said, if you don't give 20% enriched uranium for our reactor, we will produce by ourselves. Mr. Kushner of France said, Iran is bluffing. They cannot enrich 20%. And we have enriched. Then they said, Iran has no the special plate. And we have shown there is such a plate. Here, the American president wrote a letter to Prime Minister Erdogan and President Lola. When? Just 50 days ago. 20th of April, requested them for their mediation with Iran to accept depositing of its LEU in Turkey and and uh, receiving 20% enriched uranium. When they came to Iran, maybe the Americans' assessment was that it will not be a, a successful mission. But they came to Iran. We have accepted. 
We have issued Tehran Declaration, depositing our LEU in Turkey. We have trusted Turkey, as always, and receiving 20% enriched uranium. They have requested them. And this was based on our cooperation, confidence building. But unfortunately, they have moved to a confrontation approach. And that was taking the case to the Security Council, which was not you know, reasonable. This exchange fuel could create a new base for further cooperation. Dear Ambassador asked me, what is the reaction of Iran for this uh, uh, approach, for this decision, which they have adopted uh, this resolution? You know, Turkey and Brazil have voted no to this resolution, and Lebanon abstained. And uh, which they, I think Lebanon also is going to change their vote to no uh, within the next 24 hours. I have heard, and <clears throat> we have taken our step. That was Tehran Declaration. Now they have taken their step. That was resolution. In our understanding, they have am damaged the perspective of the Security Council. What we are going to do, definitely we will consider we will have our consultation with our friends, Turkey and Brazil, and we will, we will take appropriate steps. Uh, a while day after tomorrow, uh, I leave uh, Uzbekistan, which I'm going tomorrow morning to, to participate in the uh, Shanghai summit there. Uh, in Tehran, we will consider and we will let you know. Uh, today, I had very good meetings in, in uh, Dublin with the foreign minister, with the speaker of the parliament, and also with the minister of education. And uh, I think historically, Iran and Ireland have very good relations together. Uh, at the same time, we have enjoyed our economic cooperation uh, in the past in some areas, and nowadays in some other areas. Our policy is not to con concentrate our economic relation with some specific European countries. We want to have different partners. In the past, it was concentrated on three or four countries in Europe. We would like to have more partners and uh, strengthen our uh, cooperation with, with the uh, rest of the European countries. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Yes. Uh, yeah, uh, Roman China now, I'm asking this question in my capacity as a member of the Institute. And it's member of the uh, Institute, uh, yes. It's really a question in relation to the foreign relations. And I would just have to say before I ask the question, it's related to Israel. I commend your openness to dialogue, Foreign Minister, and your welcome. I think you said uh, welcome to criticize each other's policies, which I think is a commendable attribute in a Foreign Minister. I mean that sincerely. And I'd also congratulate Ambassador Murphy on his composure during the earlier commotion. <laughs> uh, my question really is, uh, what are the prospects for Israel-Iran relations? which we all know at the moment are really non-relations. To me, it's the most worrying relationship, or as I say, non-relationship on the planet today because of its prospects to cause, I mean, let's be blunt about it, very serious global problems. I mean, we've seen the situation recently with Israel's attack on the flotilla, a clear violation of international law, 85 kilometers off the coast of Israel in international law waters, an illegal act, piracy, and uh, the kidnapping, they were not people taken, they were actually kidnapped, in defense of an illegal international blockade, of which I have, I enthusiastically condemn. But the worrying thing, foreign minister, is that the people of Israel did not regard that as a serious issue, but if anything, were enthusiastic. And that really worries me, because Israel at the moment has a very, very dangerous siege mentality. And that's a frightening thing. And my question really is, against that background, your president gave the impression he was a Holocaust denier and appeared to deny the Holocaust. In fact, before this meeting, I told a colleague I was going to this meeting, and he made me watch a clip on YouTube where your president was invited to withdraw what he had said about the Holocaust. 
And frankly, he didn't do it. Now, we have a very serious situation between Iran and Israel. And I want to ask you, uh, Foreign Minister, uh, you know, <laughs> what are you doing about reducing the tension in that situation? As I would ask the Israeli Foreign Minister as well. Because it seems to me that your country at the moment appears bent on a course that could lead many of us to serious destruction. And I apologize for putting it as dramatically as that, but in <coughs> fairness, given developments on the high seas in the Mediterranean recently, and uh, the situation as it's evolving at the moment, it is quite worrying. Uh, and actually, yeah, I'll leave it at that. I could go further, but I think I'll leave it at that. My fair share at the moment. Thank you. Yes. Uh, thank you very much. Um, <coughs> Uh, I explained a little bit about Iran's position to reduce the tension, which was in your last sentence, that what is Iran doing? Iran has tried its best to reduce the tension in our region. We need development. We need sustainable development for our country, for our region also. We are sending the, the, the main part of the energy to the rest of the world what we are not enjoying in our region. Why? This is our question. Why hold the crisis is, uh, is, is, is centered in our region? In, in our understanding, presence of the, 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 the foreign forces in the region, based on what admission or resolution Iraq was occupied. There are a lot of questions in this regard, but specifically towards Palestine and the Middle East crisis, which goes back for more than last 60 years. You are asking me about Holocaust, or you are raising your comment on this regard. What Iran said about this issue, this happening. It's very clear, my friend. In Europe, there was an inhuman war, Second World War. When I visited Minsk in Belarus, the foreign minister told me only these four buildings were survived from, from the damaging of the country. And 23 million people in, in uh, Belarus were killed. Tens of millions in whole Europe have been killed. Among them, Christians, Jews, maybe Muslims, a, a, any, anybody. And definitely Muslims also, when we go to, to Russia, the Soviet Union. And That, that is an historical, you know, a sorrow happening, which was the Second World War. Fixing that this figure had been killed in this process or that figure. I'm not in the position to say. The historians should say. But you have created some atmosphere in Europe that the people are afraid to talk about it. Do you know an official, a member of a party and the government in European countries who said something against? He was uh, separated from his party, from the government, from his post, and taken to the court. Do you know some ordinary teacher in Europe who raised some question in this regard? He was uh, separated from his job. Is this re the renaissance which Europe was following and the liberal democracy here? But what is suffering our region toward Israel and the Palestinian issue? We have very clear question in this regard. A crime happened where in Europe? 
in this crime, millions of people have been killed. All right. Who have killed these people? Some European leaders, isn't it? Who were the victim of this uh, criminal action, this, uh, this uh, inhuman war? The Europeans, the citizens in Europe, and the countries in this region. The main question in Middle East is why the Palestinians should pay for this crime. If you go to the history, I remember when John F. Kennedy said, the philosophy of establishment of Israel is the people who had no land and the land without people. Both sides of this sentence is not correct. The people without land, he means the Jewish people who remained from the Second World War in Europe and were sent to, to, to Palestine. They were not the people without land. They were the people who have been the citizens of Europe here in different countries. And that land was not without people. The Palestinian, either Muslims, Christians, and Jews, were living together for 1,000 years. And that land was not without people. They have sent these to, to, to Palestine. And if it was some kind of annexing an action to, to those population in Palestine, maybe it was considerable. But they have sent out the, the original people of Palestine. One million, two million. Today, we have five, five million refugees of Palestinians outside. And now, in the border of 1948, not 67, 48, Still, there are some Arabs, about 2 million. And the new round of, immigra uh, uh, the, the new round of immigration is to send these uh, you know, Palestinians out from that their own territory. This is the problem. And this root cause was the main reason not to solve the problem. You remember, since last 60 years, we had 130 resolutions, in, uh, initiatives, uh, the, the uh, roadmap, and uh, Arab initiatives, different plan for solution. Why it did not took place? Was it the main reason Iran? They have sit together for several years. I remember from 30, 35 years ago till now. They had different meetings. Why? I think we should look to the main cause of the crisis in the Middle East. Iran has its own democratic proposal to solve this problem. And that is, for once, Everybody should sit and establish a referendum by the original Palestinian people, the Muslim, the Jewish, the Christians, and the others, and to, to decide for themselves. Anything they have decided, definitely the countries in the region will accept. How many countries in the region have relation with Israel? Among 57 Muslim countries, how many have the relation with Israel? It doesn't create any question why it is like that. The others are living together. Why this is the problem? That is the main cause of threats in our understanding. We are living in that region. We just 
explain our position, nothing more, nothing more. And uh, that, that, that's why I think for, for Palestine, which is a serious question, a serious crisis, United Nations, Islamic Conference, non-aligned, everywhere, the institutions, the NGOs, they, they, they can come together and have consultations and think about this proposal for solution in the region. This is our understanding, and uh, we, we have tried our best, as you see, even for Israel, we have our democratic proposal, nothing else. We have touched on some very sensitive questions which have taken a lot of time. I'll take one more question, the lady back there. Can you wait for the microphone? Um, if, if you allow me, uh, I will ask two questions. Uh, my name is Ruja Fazaili. I'm a lecturer in Islamic Studies and Human Rights in Trinity College, Dublin. Um, and also I'm a member of Amnesty International. Uh, so I'd like to bring uh, kind of the questions back uh, to the human rights and the human rights situation in Iran. And I'm glad that uh, you, get, you, you yourself said at the very start that you like the space for us to have some sort of dialogue. Um, I, um, I wanted to ask the, the first question that I have um, is uh, to do with the, with the execution, increase in the number of executions since the 12th of June election 2009. Um, and uh, these are people being executed on charges of muharebe, enmity with God. Um, and this was a charge that was not used uh, since the 1980s, uh, between 1983 to 1986. Thousands and thousands of political prisoners were executed on the charge of muharebe, enmity with God, which, is a, which has a very loose interpretation. Um, and, uh, and this has come back again, which is quite alarming. And the five uh, prisoners who were executed on 9th of May, four of them were Kurdish, um, and, and one was not Kurdish, uh, they were charged with, with Muharebe. So if you could explain that, and also explain um, the increase in number of prisoners. I know 81 prisoners were, uh, were, were freed recently, but there is still hundreds. And out of these hundreds, there are many, many journalists. Iran is one of the biggest uh, detention centers for journalists. So, uh, you know, they weren't armed unless you call being armed with a pen an arm. Um, and, uh, and human rights activists, women rights activists. And also, um, my second question uh, has to do the with- The first one was five questions. Okay. Well, well, it was Go one ahead. in one. It's human Go rights. Ahead, don't worry. The, the second one, <laughs> the second one uh, is, uh, has to do with the, the membership. And this is more, this is you know, open to, to the diplomatic uh, community here. The membership of Iran to CSW, the Commission on the Status of Women. Um, and I do wonder, um, you know, Iran is, is, has become a member to CSW while um, what Iran itself has not ratified, signed or ratified the Convention on Elimination of All Forms of Discrimination Against Women. And, um, and increasingly, women's rights activists and, and human rights activists are, are, are having, um, you know, difficulties. They're, they're being imprisoned and the, and the situation is deteriorating. So if you could explain these, I would appreciate it. That, I, I don't mind, you can take my picture. <laughs> okay, thank you very much for your questions. And, uh, huh? Thank you very much for your questions. This is the allegation of, you, you referred to 1983, 81, 83, and uh, you have given some numbers. It shows that you have gone to, the, uh, to Iran and counted the people who have been killed. And that is the allegation of the MKO for, for everywhere, which they are raising. And uh, I, I would like to introduce the MKO. Uh, it is an, uh, a terrorist uh, organization. It does not belong to the question of this distinguished uh, ladies here, but I have to, to, to introduce uh, to you uh, they have a very thick file in Iran. 16,000 people are killed by this MKO group in Iran. They have killed 27 members of parliament, 1980, 1981. While I was member of parliament, 27 of my friends, four ministers, 
our president, our prime ministers, so many deputy ministers, and ordinary people on the street, in the store, in, in different places. And they had the experience of terrorist activity even before revolution. By Americans and EU, they have been included in the list of terrorist group by Europe. Last year, through some, some you know, uh, uh, activities, they tried, and unfortunately, some European countries insist on a double standard and take them out from the list. That's why our friend here used the word of muharaba, and we uh, use the, the word of uh, when the resource of a, an allegation is uh, the, 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 the group which we cannot trust them. And they have been involved to terrorist activities in Iran. Definitely, there is no value for such allegation by this group. And the number which you have mentioned, you have said about the NGOs in Iran and the human rights uh, activists in Iran. Do you know that we have already 7,000 NGOs only for women? Different groups who have activity on human rights. With Middle East Watch, with this amnesty group, with the others. I am in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs since 1984. And I have been involved with all of them. Last week I was in Belgium in, in European Parliament. I had a speech there. And in such institution, may you know, you know it, e e P, uh, EPC, European Political Center. We had just such a gathering there. And the representative of uh, Human Rights Watch asked me about the visa. And I told him, when I was Deputy Minister for International Affairs, I hosted Mr. Galin de Paul who came for human rights situation in Iran. But my good friend, when we compare the situation in your country and in the other countries in region, you will find your country most democratic than the others. You know how the women have the position in Iran. My wife is with me. She is pharmacy doctor. She is my advisor. She is uh, Director General for the Women Affairs in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. She is in, involved with different NGOs, either in Iran or in, in her trip to the other countries. We are quite open-minded people. And this group, 7,000 NGOs only for women, we have tens of thousands of NGOs in Iran. We are located in a region which in some country in that region, you know very well, their debate is, can we give permission to the women to drive? And there is nothing in West against those countries. That's why allegations on human rights should not be politicized should not be based on double standard. And this is very important. You have seen, your father was martyred, I heard, in the war. And you could imagine, even during the war in your country, we had election. And we did not stop democracy in your country. In such circumstances, our understanding is we are not fulfilled in everything and 
uh, absolute situation in all areas. Which country is in absolute situation? There, there, there can be. Here in Europe, the, in, in Europe, the, in, that, that's what I'm saying, that's what I'm saying. If, if, all right, all right, please, please, when the, those three good ladies who are sitting there, you have been civilized, and through the, through the chairman, okay, through the, through the chairing of the meeting, you, you should ask for permission and raise your question, as that lady raised her questions. And this is the situation, this is the situation. You said about hijab, okay. Our criticize in Europe is, why the lady cannot wear a hijab? Why the Muslim ladies who would like to have a scarf, to wear a scarf, why they are not allowed? Have you, have you raised this question please, to support please. your Muslim sisters here in Europe? No, but we raise it as our colleagues, our friends, the diplomatic crew and the researcher, they raise their criticize on Iran and patiently we answer. At the same time, you have to follow the rules and regulations in your country. When you come to Iran, Madame Kalmiri, the foreign minister of, uh, of Switzerland, paid a visit to Iran and we signed agreement on exporting of gas to Switzerland. And she, she respect our rules and regulation during her staying in Iran, she, she covered her hair. And we, we do explain our thanks for such respecting our rules and regulations. At the same time in Europe, in Europe, when they are ta talking about their values, it means the people can wear their hair, the people cannot. Okay, that's free. Why the Muslim women are in trouble? Have you seen uh, the Madame Shervini in the court of Germany, who was killed by a German uh, person in the court, who was under question there? And I said several times that the, the German should, should respond for that. And I have to, to express our thanks to the island because of its very strong position and the strong position of so many countries about Israel's barbarian action in Gaza, in the international water. The people who were taking the, the humanitarian assistance. And now, yes, 81 are released and we do hope also in this uh, circumstances, the others also, who have not done violating, killing somebody, and having arms, be released. We do not benefit for keeping them in the jail. This is our recommendation to the relevant people, and this is the policy which in Iran we try to follow. And uh, in this regard, I thank you very much, Mr. Chairman, for creating of this opportunity. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Minister. I know there are many other questions, and I know that uh, the subjects that have been raised have only been uh, lightly entered into. But uh, nevertheless, uh, I think that uh, the Minister has uh, answered some rather difficult questions. Uh, his answers, in turn, naturally, give rise to other questions, uh, but uh, the day isn't long enough to uh, deal with everything. Uh, might I close by thanking you, Minister, for thank you. talking to us and thanking you uh, also uh, for being willing to uh, take some difficult questions and give us your point of view on them. Thank you very much. I thank you for your patience. Thank you.